Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in to our Adobe Education Creativity Workshop. Um, today is Wednesday, August 28th, and I'm very excited for our back to school season to be joined by Sherry Disler, who's one of our Adobe Education leaders um, from Florida. And Sherry has just um, started a new role this school year, and I'd love for you, uh, Sherry, to share a little bit more about it. And today we'll be talking a little bit more about Spark um, and ePortfolios and how you can use um, Spark page for ePortfolios. So Sherry, I'll go ahead and hand it off to you. Okay, thanks, Clara. Hi, I'm Sherry Disler. I'm an academic technology teacher, and I just started a new role at Cardinal Gibbons High School in South Florida. I was at my last job for 20 years and decided to make a little change and try something new, and I'm really happy with this new choice I did. So I'm starting a computer science department at this school, teaching programming, coding, and um, AP computer science principles. So I didn't really know how all these classes would work together with Spark and Adobe, and we're really getting off to a great start, and I have like so much stuff to show you guys that we've been doing, and the kids are really excited, and they just want me to post their stuff on Twitter. So it's been really cool. So I have a nice little presentation I'm gonna get started with you guys. Um, I've been teaching for 20 years. I've taught art, I taught computer graphics, and about seven years ago, I started teaching computer science. I've coached robotics, and it's kind of good not to have little Legos in my classroom after all those years. So I'm really excited. I have a really nice setup if you guys want to see. This is my classroom. We have flat screen TVs and flexible seating, and I don't even use the projector in here. Um, and kids have a nice environment to work with. In my, I have one class with 12 kids and they all want to sit at the same table. It's a really nice group of students. Not too many girls in my classes. Uh, my AP computer science class, I have 11 students and only two girls. I have one class of 30 with two girls and one class of 20 with one girl. So uh, we're gonna try to get girls in these classes. And we're starting off the school year with creating tools so that they could reflect and present their work to us. And I have a presentation that I'm going to show you with all that stuff in it. Are you guys awesome. ready? Is that a green screen that I saw over there? It's a green screen that we That's have so right cool. here. So it's set up for them to do, and we've been making videos and Spark pages and Spark notes and logos and Padlets and so really cool. cool stuff. So nice. really excited. All right, so I'm going to share my screen with you. And share screen. I'm gonna hit present. So uh, I shared this presentation with Clara, and she could share it out with you guys. But if you click the Spark logo, that's gonna take you to a Spark page that has some nice student work in it. As I said, I'm Sherry Disler. I teach high school computer science. Um, and right now I'm teaching three classes and love my new job. So I used to be an art teacher, graphic art teacher, and now I'm a computer science teacher. And what's really important to me is creativity and bringing that into the classroom. And so I always had it in the classroom and I still have it in my classroom. So it really, it, it's what I like to do and the kids enjoy doing it. And letting them share their work with me and the world and getting their stuff out there. Uh, my old school was a uh, pre-K through 12 preparatory school, and the kids started using iPads in pre-K three. So by the time they got to high school, they were pretty strong with technology. At my new school, we're getting on the boat with everything. We want to become an Apple school. We have all the Spark uh, apps on their iPads and they want the kids to be more creative and my role is to help teachers as well as students get there. So really the main tool they've been using in the past is Notability and we're gonna get them past that and bring things into Notability, out of Notability, app smashing and creativity. Um, digital literacy, this, um, trying to prepare the students with the skills they'll need to present their work in my class and other classes. 
So my whole goal is the things they learn in my class, show their other teachers, show their other students, so they can make learning more exciting for themselves and other people. The teachers need a lot of training and it's not always easy to give personalized training and sometimes the students are the best teachers to teach this stuff. So if the teachers see the students using it, they're gonna hopefully take it to the next level. So I've been posting the stuff on Twitter and the kids are like really excited about seeing their stuff and themselves out there. And I have something I'm gonna show you after that's gonna melt your hearts. And so we're using Spark to document learning in my class. It's a coding class and a programming class. We haven't even opened up the programming yet. We used Adobe Spark and they created logos, nine different logos, and they're putting that in Padlet. And I had them create videos in, not Spark video, but using Apple Clips because I was waiting for us to get the educational version. So what was kind of cool is they created it in a, Apple Clips, but then brought it into Adobe Spark video, which was nice because you get to use the square version or the rectangle version. And it also taught them different skills, how to add a video that's more than 30 seconds, putting uh, different things and how different apps work. So it was, I'm kind of glad that we did use the Clips video first. And now they're either re, they're adding it to it and recreating it. So they're creating authentic assessments about themselves right now, about their accomplishments, their dreams, their goals, just to get to know each other and get to learn the software before we start using it for learning computer science. Um, so computer coding, I mean, we could read code if we want, but my students create the code and screencast it, and the way they're gonna turn in every assignment to me is in their Adobe Spark page. And they're gonna keep uploading that page and throughout the year, they're gonna have documentation of everything they learned and everything they did and everything they created in one page. And hopefully they'll start using that in other classes and have teacher training to go teach the teachers how to do this. But I'm not gonna read code and, um, and I don't think the kids really wanna read the code. So they're creating, and also part of the AP computer science task, they have to create, they have this is a create task and the class I took, they said to just take your phone and film the coding. It's basically like a game or something, but I'm gonna teach them to screencast, edit it, put it through um, Spark video and come up with professional videos that the kids hand in instead of you know just photographing their screen or filming their screen with their phones. And the explore task, the explore task is a writing task and kids get jolted for not handing in original work. So they're gonna have documentation throughout the year of all the stuff they've done. So if the AP, if the college board comes to them and says, I don't think you did this, they're gonna have proof of their growth and their learning throughout the year. So it won't even be a question for them. I want them to show their learning. And I think if they have this all in one place, it's gonna be a really good tool for them for the future. Yeah, Any questions? Question. Yeah, a quick question from Anissa, who's um, joining us um, from California. Um, question like, will you be using Adobe Rush at all with Spark? Or how? speak a little bit more to the, the progress with video specifically. Okay, with, with Rush, we just, I just had a student ask me about it today. So for the AP Computer Science Principles class, I got to start getting into the programming part of it. And I, I have more flexibility with my other classes, so yes, and the kids were asking what Rush is, and I said it's in between um, Spark Video and Premiere. It's something in between, and it's a little more than iMovie. So they're excited, and I'm going to get those apps downloaded to, to their manager like this week. So that's the next step. That's a great question, though. And if, 10 minutes ago, I would have said I don't know, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. Any other questions before I move on? No? Good. Okay, so I had the students create logos and I showed them like a five minute video on logos that are out there with, with meaning. And you know, we had discussions how bold, simple, meaningful, and they came up with their own logos and some of them had words, some of them didn't have words. And they were working with each other, comparing and contrasting. And you know, the, they love the icons in Adobe Spark. 
So to have those professional logos in an app that's free is awesome. Um, you know, like Keynote has logos in there, but not as many, and it's just easy for them to save these as PNGs and use them in other things. So with the logo design, they're, they're real, I'll show you what's going on in there, but they've been having a blast creating those. Um, here's just some screenshots of it. So we also didn't just create the logos, we discussed uh, Creative Commons versus copyright, all the logos in Adobe are free for them to use, what do, you know, background images in logos, and they're gonna brand themselves as soon as we get our education license working. Uh, transparent, the difference between transparent backgrounds and also white space in their logos, and that's also important in their writing part of the AP Computer Science portion, because they don't wanna have just one paragraph for these students. There's a lot of questions, and to break up those things and know where your white space is is important in a lot of things, as well as, as design. So, um, I had them to design nine logos. They didn't have to all be different. They could remix what they already had if they really liked something, just change the text, change the colors, and um, they all posted them on Padlet, so they were seeing them live as they were coming up, and they were getting different ideas off of each other. And I'll show you the Padlet in a few minutes, but these are just screenshots of some of them. And they were taking their interests and making it work. And they were working together. It was, it was, they were very collaborative during this project, working together and giving each other input. And then we even, for the students that finished, we started Sketch to, to make icons of their faces today, and they were enjoying that. Um, and they were working in real time, seeing as they were seeing their work show up on the board so you could kind of see what's going on here and these all had kind of meanings to what who they are which is nice and nice to get it done like the first week of school this is a programming class and when the parents come next week I'm gonna have all this work to show them that they created um, so I want to cultivate a creative environment the programming I use is um, Alice programming and they're creating animations and movies and and it's a creative programming software so they're going to always be creating things and um, they'll have a way to showcase what they've been making along the way um, so how can we use these in other classes as we're going along the kids are saying how they could use it in other classes they can make an ending to a book so, uh, today was 60s day um, social media I was showing them how I use it for social media. Sometimes, you know, I get in the kick where I put every picture I do, I put through Adobe Spark, so it fits in Twitter. I just put one little word in there. Sometimes my logo's in there. It makes it look more professional, and they could see that. They could see what looks good. Um, if they want to print things, project projects, book covers, icons, app smashing. So instead of just using Notability, now they could use all these things together and help them become better digital citizens. Um, so um, there's icon sets, you know, with, uh, they posted these in the blog for Adobe Spark post, and they had all these icon sets for different classes, and I, the kids are just loving these icons. So teachers could use them, students could use them, and they're not using any copyright infringements by using them on their, their work for teaching. So. Pretty cool that they have all these. Um, <laughs> so this is a, a Spark video that I made. I hope you don't mind. But I just wanted to show the students that, and I think this is kind of weird because it takes live photos and turns them into videos from your iPhone. But Adobe Apple Clips doesn't do that. Like Apple Clips, I don't think, takes live photos. So this is just a little video of my trip to Hawaii using a couple of live photos. Hopefully it'll load. So with Adobe Spark Video, you get clean videos. Uh, you could change the layout very easily in the themes. It's nice that it has square or landscape view, so you could decide what shape you want it, and you only have two choices. And music is put in automatically, which is a nice effect. So they don't have to add it, it's already there. So this is my little For 
So um, at the feature of having the live videos is the live photos. They're not even taking videos. They're just taking pictures of their phones and turning them into dynamic videos. And that was something that took me five minutes to make. So kids, students could use this in their classes and you know add words to it, add uh, their voice to it. But I just wanted to show them what we could create really quickly. I hope you enjoyed my little Hawaii trip. Um, such a fun trip. <laughs> and I have examples of student work with pages. And I'm going to just show you a couple of them. And then I'm going to show you my Padlet. But I think it's going to pull me out of the presentation for a minute. But this was one of my students, one of my ninth graders, no, sorry, 10th graders today. And he was showing me his Spark page. and. He goes, yeah, no, I picked this old car because I like working on cars. I said, if you're telling me that, then you should write it in here. So they're learning to reflect on things that they do and things that they choose. And it's such a big part of education right now. And we have to train the students how to do it. And here's one of his logos that he made. And they put little captions. The dirt bike in the logo represents the dirt bikes that I own. The tools in the corner show that I rebuild dirt bike for profit. And here's another logo. So here's uh, the logo shows that I like to play football. I play Cardinal Gibbons High School. Um, I guess he's a gamer. And here's his video. He made this <laughs> in clips and brought it into Spark. So let's see what he has here. And also having the square. My interests are football. I also enjoy rebuilding dirt bikes, and computer programming is also another interest of mine. My goals for this year are to have a good grades and a good GPA. My dreams are to be successful in doing what I love um, for life. I think this class is going to be a great class for me to learn. Uh, I used to code when I was younger, and um, I'm excited to learn about the class. <laughs> nice big smile at the end. Um, so this boy, the next one I'm going to show you, this student was working on his video, and he really wasn't doing too much work in my class. He's on the football team. I didn't know if he like really wanted to be in the class. And he came in the next day with this video. Well, first I'll show you his page, but he came in the next day with this last part is the video. And the and I was like blown away. And the first thing he said, are you gonna tweet this? And he gave everyone a wow in the class. So his name's Damon. And here's his video. I'm gonna play it for you. Welcome. My welcome video for uh my welcome video for programming. Hope you enjoy. And then here's his logo. He only put one logo up here so far. Oh, Miss Avrith, nice to see you. <laughs> so um, here's Damon's video, and I hope you enjoy it as much as the rest of the class did. I think that if the kids start getting stuff like this out there now, I know it's not a personal branding class, but if they start creating things like this in all their classes, 
colleges and NFL is gonna see this and it's gonna make them better people. But I had the students also, you know, give comments. We didn't, we had a critique, but I said, it's a positive crit critique. What do you like about this? I wasn't prepared the first week of school for them to criticize each other's work. And everyone loved his drawings and, you know, they saw something in him that we wouldn't have seen if we didn't make that little video. So it's kind of cool. And then this is Winnie, she's from China. And this was from last year. So this is what they're gonna be doing, uh, reflecting on their work in computer graph, in computer science. So Winnie made a page and her picture she chose was from China. This is Alice Software. And we always start with the bunny. That was our first world, I love Alice. Um, so I'm gonna have them post their worlds as they do them. Instead of handing them in as a file in a learning management system, they're gonna hand them in on their Spark page. And what ends up happening is they have an e-portfolio at the end of the school year. So they're on YouTube, they're embedded in Spark on Adobe site and also teaching them how to write little reflections about their work. A lot of cultures aren't used to that and a lot of students that aren't used to technology as well. Some students, you know, haven't had it that are just starting here. So it's been pretty interesting and pretty amazing. Get back to my show. Oops. So I'm not gonna show you all of these because you could, you're all gonna have access to them. But this is one uh, Spark video that one of my students made last year and they took their Alice World and they had to cut it a couple of times because Spark video only takes 30 seconds of video. So they were playing with that. But I think Clara's seen this world, but I just love it because really students from other cultures aren't asked to what they think about their work or what other people think about their work. So this was, a girl from China, hope uh, you're enjoying my Alice World of Christmas. I love this, Sherry. So students, how did that work with Alice? Did they upload the file then to the Spark video or um, which which program did they learn first? They learned Alice first. So this was a project. It wasn't, um, so this was a project where they can make a greeting card and yeah. then they screencast it using QuickTime on their okay. computers. And then they upload the video to Spark and embed it, right? Is that how it works? Um, yes, Spark takes yeah. videos from the computer. They were using mm -hmm. uh, the web browser. Um, so here at the end, and then she put her reflection in at the end. I spent a lot of time making this animation, wrote hundreds of lines of code. I said, what else about this video? And she goes, my teacher loves it. <laughs> I love it. So that was well, you're, you're getting a lot of um, awesome comments in the chat here. Um, David says, amazing. Um, Tanya said, um, also amazing for assessment as learning, reflective practice, formative assessment, um, the idea of, of screencasting to reflect on the videos and then add into Spark, loves it. Tanya loves, loves it so much. And then um, Georgina, who's joining us uh, from Jordan, says, brilliant. Um, so hopefully this sparks a lot of ideas um, for the new school year. Awesome. So I'm going to just show you quickly my Padlets. That I, these are just from this week. And my programming, I'll go with my programming. No, I'm going to go with my coding class. So I have 30 students in this class. So it's a big class. And they, as they created things, they took the links to their pages and put them in here. So all their work is in one place to share with each other and me and nothing is handed in through a learning management system. Everything is up here and 
it's been working great. So the students, I showed you Michael's, uh, Michael's Spark page. So the Spark page, if you put it in Padlet, it gives you a nice little thumbnail of what's going on. Uh, they could put pictures off their phones. Some of them just put the website in the wrong place. So if, if they attach a link, it shows up. And, I, and they could also add comments to each other's work. We didn't get to that part yet. And then you'll see my next class, the kids are a little older. So my AP computer science class, and their work is a little, a little different, a little more mature. So these are logos they made that represent themselves or something they like, and this is what they want to have on their work to represent them. Cool. And also, I have this. Sorry, Clara, what'd you say? I was just going to say, this looks so awesome. And I just shared the link for Padlet, too, for those who, ha if those who are tuning in haven't used Padlet before. Um, but it looks like a lot of people have, too. So um, love the, um, you know, app smashing to be able to use different programs together. Yeah, and it's nice because Padlet's free also. You get three free pads with each account. So it worked out perfect for my three classes. And I think the students are really excited and, you know, want to keep going and know what they're required to do. And I think for the AP class, it's going to be really important because they could put writing samples in there as well in the Spark page. So they could have screenshots of their writing with links to their Google Docs, and it's all going to be in there all in one place for them. Yeah, it's really cool. Thanks. I, I think that's all I have for my presentation. Do we have any questions that anyone wants to ask? Yeah, Tanya um, just has an idea. So she says, next up, they can brand their Spark templates with their logos. I love that idea. I think that would be be really cool. I'm waiting for that because we, um, we're having a lot of problems getting the books on the student iPads right now. So they're trying to get the books before, as soon as we get that account going, then they're going to go in and, and brand all their stuff. But they'll have nine logos to choose from, which I think is even better that we kind of had that little wait period before they got to put it in there. And um, another question from uh, Georgina, which LMS are you using and how are you kind of sharing out um, different assignments with students? We're using Shobi. And so since we just started, the Spark Everything Spark is on their iPads, and I send out announcements in Shobi right now, just giving them links to things. Um, I'm used to using Canvas, but I'm, Shobi is like really simple and easy for the students to use, and they seem to really like it. And you can annotate in there for the students as well on, on most items. Great. Well, I just shared the link to Shobi um, as well. And then um, a couple questions about Google Classroom. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you're a Google Apps for Education school or, or incorporating um, Google at all with this. We are a Google Apps school, but we're not using Google Classroom this year. So Shobi, I think, kind of does pretty much everything Google Classroom does. Um, not sure about the grading in Shobi though. I haven't gotten there yet. But we also use a learning management system called Plus Portal, which is like grade quick. So it's a, I used that a long time ago and I'm back to it. So all these systems are new to me this year, except Adobe. That's the only thing old to me. <laughs> I've only been and at my I'm, seven days, so. I know, that's it's a lot kind of <laughs> Drinking from the fire hose, I'm sure. <laughs> no more than um, another seven days. But we're trying to. I'm trying to, like, you know, figure out all the the processes here, and, and they're very organized. And the whole tech department, I never saw anything like it. The people work so hard. Um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I know it sounds really awesome, and a lot of opportunities um, given that amazing classroom that you have um, to collaborate with students. Very excited. And you know, you could join us one day in our classroom and talk to the I students so. about working at Adobe. They, I think that would really make it exciting for them as well. 
I hope so. Yeah, I will, I'll have to come. I know Tanya's in Florida, so maybe we'll come and take a trip out there. No, I know she, she will be visiting. <laughs> be excited to FaceTime you and you yeah. know, from the office and and see their work that's that they're doing. They're, they're just loving sharing their work and they want to see it out there on Twitter. And so the next thing is to get some of the stuff on YouTube. I got to find out the school policies, but I think they all, since they have the Google accounts and they're over 13, they could all put it on on YouTube and that's the next step. So they're really, they haven't been exposed to a lot of that stuff and it's exciting for them. Yeah, definitely. And always share student work with me. Um, we work closely with our social team and we'll, we'll share things out when it comes to student work. Um, and if there's ever um, times that students want to talk to a developer or a project manager or somewhere, someone else at Adobe, I can always set that up where we can do like a, a Blue Jeans call and they can like ask questions. I've done like mystery Skypes before. I've done different uh, um, reading. That's more on the elementary side, but um, yeah, it's always really cool to see what you can do with the that. The computer science principles class isn't about, about programming. That's just one part of it. And so yeah. you're talking to engineers and even, you know, where your journey that got you there would be exciting for them. Yeah, no, definitely. I'd be happy to do that. And yeah, we can figure out what makes sense. Um, and I'm just seeing if there's any other questions in here. So um, another question about um, all that you've shared today, this project, um, how are you using it for evaluation? Not not assessment, but specifically evaluation. I'm not evaluating it right now. I'm using it as a tool so they could start sharing their assessments and I could it's for the future of the classes. So this is really like pre-work before they start working. They're, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I think, um, yes. Teaching them the tools so they could be successful in the class instead of, you know, just throwing things at them. A lot of teachers say, make a video, do this. I'm giving them the time to learn the tools and teaching them the tools and helping them with the tools that mm -hmm. when they start their programming and writing and They'll have all those tools to be able to share it out with the class and with me. Okay. Well, this is a great way to kick off the school year. And I shared your presentation in the in the chat here, and I'll be sure to share it out with the recording. Um, but Sherry, for those who are watching the recording, are there any other resources that you'd like to share with them or, or other ways of getting in touch? Oh, my Twitter, at Sherry, just so I could put it on, on the slide. But uh, you could definitely tweet me or... Uh, email me at Sherry, Dissler Sherry at Gmail. Clara has my personal email if anyone wants to get in touch. I'd love to do that and share ideas with anyone that wants to share. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Sherry. This has been really informative and I love the different ideas of all the different programs that you're using and um, hopefully this is a project that educators can bring to their own classrooms too. So I know the beginning of the school year is always crazy. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time to share this with us. Thank you so much. And it was fun getting this all together and getting the kids, you know, on track for the school year using your tools. And thanks. It's I can't believe these tools are for free though. You know, it's it's amazing what you're doing for the students. And they're yeah. loving it. No, it's great. And we're excited to see how um I know there's a couple new features that have come out previous to back to school and collaboration. So, yeah. So yeah, and there's getting laptops in this class too, so they can work together on things. And I'm looking forward to all the new things as well with Adobe. So thanks for having me, Clara. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. And um, thank you for all who are watching the recording. Uh, be sure to join us next Wednesday at noon for another creativity workshop. Um, and have a great um, back to school season. And, and hopefully you're able to try out some of these ideas we shared today. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email me directly. I'm galn at adobe.com. And I'll look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.